Welcome to a air bike update. Please share, like, and subscribe. Thanks and have a wonderful day. Hey folks, welcome back. So this is an air bike update. Now, if you're one of my many, probably 95% RC followers, which is radio control, uh, I'm building an air bike. I'm building an ultralight. And if you haven't been watching my updates, I'm not sure where you've been. So let's get into this. Like I said, most of my followers follow me for my radio control content, which is I love to build ginormous scale electric model airplanes, 150 inches or more. The two planes I've been flying in the last 13, 14 years are 188 inches and 197 inches. But one of my buddies says, why don't you build a real airplane? And I'm just like, you know, a Kit Fox is too expensive because I love Kit Foxes. Um, an RV is way too expensive. So I thought about it and, and he mentioned, why not build a uh, ultralight? And I'm like, nah, I don't want to build an ultralight. But then I fell in love with an ultralight called an air bike. So my air bike is actually doing really, really good. Um, the fuselage is done, but this video is going to be about covering the leading edge of the wing. So it's kind of exciting that I think I'm finally getting into the home stretch. And on all of my projects, the last 10% of the project takes like 90% of me just being very precise and accurate and getting it right. And it might be paranoia, I don't know. I want to do a shout out real quick to my sponsor, uh, RTL Fasteners. If you need bolts, nuts, blind nuts, servo screws, just about any type of small fastener, they're gonna have it. If you go to their um, website and you use a discount code, DAG25, D-A-G-25, you'll get 25% off your order if you spend more than 25 bucks. So when you look at, so let's jump into this and go full screen here. So when you look at the drawings on the air bike on the leading edge, they show building these little uh, clamp blocks and they, these use rubber bands to hold the skin to the leading edge, leading edge. And on the air bike, the leading edge of the wing is three millimeter birch ply and the leading edge of the aileron is 1.5 millimeter. Today, we're only talking about the leading edge of the wing, okay? So, I went down two different paths. One was, was I gonna do the leading edge out of fiberglass, which would be a little bit more time, but I think ultimately would have been easier uh, than bending this plywood, because I had a lot of people tell me the nightmares they had bending plywood. But, uh, and also, uh, I've got a dentist who's a pilot, and he said, well, don't you think fiberglass is gonna be heavy? And, you know, everybody who's been following this project knows I want to keep it part 103, which means the airframe will be under 254 pounds, carrying five pounds of gas wet. And, uh, you know, I'm not putting the wing tips on it. I'm not putting the wheel pants on it. I'm not putting the engine cowling or the spinner. I'm doing everything to keep this plane under 254. And putting fiberglass uh, components on it would add weight. I've done a ton of fiberglass in my life to get the same strength as birch plywood would be heavier, so I decided to go the birch plywood way. So I had to figure out how I was gonna bend this plywood and not have the problems that everybody else has had, or at least not everybody, but the people who emailed me and said it was a disaster. So what I did was I went to the hardware store and bought some foam. This is a little bit of a recap too. I've already done videos on bending plywood, folks. So this is just a recap right now of how I bit my plywood. So with some alcohol, Windex, uh and water oh when windex alcohol i thought i had a third component i mixed into it but uh yeah yeah it's water it's water windex and alcohol works really good to soak into the wood and give me the ability to bend it and it and, and it worked perfect i didn't have any fracturing or splitting of the wood it worked perfect okay so now we're going to talk about getting this first piece of the leading edge on and epoxied on and for me, this was one of the scariest parts of the whole project because this wing so far, as far as I'm concerned, is virtually perfect. Everything's within a 30 second of being square and true. I mean, it is just an incredible wing. Now, one thing I wanna warn you, once you put this leading edge on, it becomes a D-tube. A D-tube is a structural, um, kind of a structural device. So if you have this wing all cattywampus uh, or wonky and crooked and you put this leading edge on it, it's locked in. It's gonna be hard to get any twist in the wing out. So I built this little uh, jig here so I could absolutely make sure each of the ribs 
were um, true. Ever, all of my ribs are within 0.1 degree of being perfectly straight up and down. Now, the first rib to the, uh, the root rib to the tip rib is the ones that you can really only adjust. If the other ribs are off, then that means you built something wrong on this wing. So the root rib and the tip rib are within 0.1 degrees and all the other ribs are within zero or 0.1 of that. So I'm really excited that it was straight. You got to really take your time here, folks, and make sure you got everything laid out in the room to do it. So here, here's some basics for me. Now, that, now, if you follow my channel for any length of time at all, you know I'm only sharing my experiences and my success and disasters. I'm not going to tell you what I think will work. I'm going to tell you what either has worked or not worked for me. Okay, so first of all, I like the room to be around 75 to 76 degrees when I'm working with any kind of epoxies. Um, they're going to cure better. They'll cure, cure faster. I believe they're going to cure stronger. Um, from my little bit of testing, and I have tested everything with epoxies, um, when you're using epoxy that drives over four to six hours, I mean cures over four to six hours, um, if you have a cure at the right time, I believe it's stronger. I really do from the testing I've done. Um, it's less brittle. If you let epoxy cure at 60 degrees, like for a day, it's actually a little bit more brittle than if that epoxy cured at the right temperature. And that's only from my testing. Now, in Indiana, how do I keep my garage 75 degrees if it's not heated? Well, now it is heated. Thanks to Amazon and this 7,500 watt behemoth, uh, and $163, which is insane how inexpensive this was, I was able to put a heater on the ceiling. Now, you notice there it says 86 degrees. In the room, it's 75 degrees. Now that's because heat rises. And I had a real hard time when I was trying to get this room kind of stabilized with temperature to get the heat down in the room. Now I had used some floor fans. I've had a couple of people say, well, why didn't I mount this at the floor? First of all, you got to walk around it. Second of all, it's going to be blowing into whatever's near it. You're going to have to have like an eight-foot radius around it if it's at the floor because it blows out really hot air. I don't like having anything close to the floor that if it blew up and had a spark could have an ignition source because I work around acetones and sometimes I've just got gas fumes. Fumes tend to lay low in the room. I like to have the heat up high. But for this whopping $85.59, I bought me a ceiling fan at Amazon. And all this stuff got delivered the next day. That's what's insane about Amazon. I didn't even have to go out and look for this crap. Um, but I did uh, take my tin snips and cut a little groove. So I made me a portable ceiling fan, folks. Um, there's two little screws in the top of it that just goes into the stud in the ceiling, and I'm ready to go. So this is how I keep the room in the uh, the temperature in the room stabilized. So now my fan will say something like 79 degrees at the ceiling and the room is 75 degrees uh, at four feet off the floor, okay? Make sure you get all your usual suspects together. Now, someone's going to go, Dag, why do you have West Systems Epoxy if you're gluing on a leading edge plywood? Well, you need to seal the back side of the plywood from the elements, folks. So either use shellac or something. I like to thin West System Epoxy with 91% um, alcohol. Now, if it's going to be structural, you want to use denatured alcohol. If you're putting on glass cloth, you want to be denatured alcohol. But if you're just sealing it so moisture can't get into the, tr the inside of the skin, then I'm just going to use uh, the highest alcohol can content I can find out of my local um, drugstore. And it works fine. Structurally speaking, I only use T88. Now, you see I 3D printed these little things to hold the syringe there. I'll explain a little bit more why I love using syringes. You can buy like a box of 500 of them on uh, Amazon for next to nothing. And these are normally used to squirt like cough medicine stuff into kids' mouths. But I use it for the hobby and it's kick-ass. Make sure you've got enough of those um, clamp blocks and rubber bands to do the job. I decided because I built all the ribs out of the small aircraft spruce nails that are coated so they won't rust. I actually got a couple of hate emails when people saw me using nails saying, you can't use nails. Nails will rust and it will ruin the wood over time. The wing will fail. Well, hey, folks, you know, Spirit of St. Louis had nails. Uh, it's still around. So um, these are nails specifically made for aircraft. Okay. And they're little bitty suckers. And you got to hold them with um, needle nose pliers to get them started when you use a little bitty ha hammer. So um, 
but these did the job and they work perfect and you'll see in a minute. So in this picture right here, I'm getting ready to put the um, what system uh, epoxy on the inside of the skin. Okay, now, since I'm epoxying on the skin, I'm not afraid of the West system being on there and penetrating the wood because the epoxy, that is the T88, is going to penetrate too because this stuff all takes four to six hours to cure. So I'm not afraid of how the adhesion is going to work. And that's from my past experience of doing this on other projects. Um, I load up two syringes, which I was guessing would be enough, and it was exactly enough to put on one skin. Now, my skin's only 48 inches in length, and I'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute, okay? So I'm only going to put one skin at a time. So I applied the epoxy on the wing. And make sure everything here is already sealed from the elements. So everything here was sealed from the elements. I know I got a little bit of dust there that I probably should have blown away. But there was no dust on any part. I'd wiped everything down with denatured alcohol and scuffed it a little bit with my... Uh, 240 um, sanding block. So everything was scuffed and ready to go and I applied my epoxy with my syringe to the places I wanted. Now I'm going to tell you why on the next skin I'm not going to do it exactly like this in a minute. So here's what it looked like and if you can see that that's a really nice fitting but you notice I've got some little popsicle sticks over here. That's because believe it or not I cut these ribs out five at a time. I couldn't get enough of them uh, stacked up and I thought I had these ribs all pretty much perfect and believe it or not there's about a 64th of an inch difference in some of these ribs where I started to see light through this so I put the popsicle sticks in there and I keep in mind epoxy won't expand I originally planned on doing this part of the rib with Gorilla Glue because it will expand and that's what I'm gonna go back to so the leading edge will be nailed and glued and down here I mean I'm sorry nailed and epoxied down here will be nailed and epoxied, but where the ribs touch the plywood here is going to be Gorilla Glue because it expands. If you've never used Gorilla Glue right, you got to use a little bit of moisture. So I'm going to have to be really careful that when I put the Gorilla Glue on here, I put a fine mist of water on there to activate it. I'm not putting the moisture where any of my epoxy is going to go. So it's going to be a little bit of a pain in the butt, but I, I know I can make it work. Um, but just so you understand the steps of putting this on, I lined up the leading edge first make sure everything's going to be right then i put the west system on the back of the leading edge then i put all my epoxy on just like you saw in the earlier steps and then i lined up the leading edge and nailed it first then i used the rubber bands to pull everything really tight into place and then i nailed down along the top and bottom of the spar and it worked absolutely perfect i mean when you see what it looks like when it's done it works absolutely perfect. Now there may be a little bit of a wave with the way that the rubber bands is pulling this here, but as you can see, I have almost three eighths of an inch that I'm gonna cut away that I had as access. I purposely made a little bit of access because I knew that I, I, might, I might need a way to go a little bit past the wood with the way I was supporting it. I mean, past the spar with the way I was supporting it. Now, one thing I did do differently from the plans, folks, is the fact that I'm using 48-inch pieces here instead of the links that they recommend is it's easier to ship UPS these skins from aircraft spruce. I mean, it's a ton cheaper. To use freight with UPS is astronomical. So I ordered all of these as 2 by 4 pieces. I mean... I ordered four by eight sheets cut up into two by four pieces so they could be shipped UPS. And if you notice the two ribs here, this is a, what I'm calling a sub rib. It's an extra rib I'm putting in just to create as a joint. There is the rib that is part of the wing. And I think they were going to give you eight foot lengths or 10 foot lengths of this, which I think would have been really hard to handle. Handling a four foot length would have been a lot, to me, it was, would be a lot easier. But these went on perfect, folks. So today I am going to continue on and um, put on another skin or two. And uh, so this is really working kick-ass. I'm, I'm really super excited with this. Now, the next one, like I said, from here to here will be Gorilla Glue. Down here will be epoxy. Here will be epoxy. And the reason I want that Gorilla Glue is that this doesn't fit 100% tight. I mean, just a 64th of an inch gave enough for daylight to show through. 
Um, I actually like a feeler gauge. I got out one of my feeler gauges just to see how much it was off. So now if I had a laser cut or would have laser cut all of these um, front ribs, I wouldn't have that problem. But believe it or not, this birch plywood at three millimeter is stiff enough that it just left little bitty gaps. Now I didn't want to put on too many rubber bands. I was afraid I'd start depressing the wood. Okay. But um, for me, folks, this is working perfect. And uh, there's the little nails that went down the leading edge. And I'm probably going to take a center punch and push those down and put a little bit of wood filler over it instead of trying to dig them out. Now, they say if you use staples, you can dig out the staples because in the plans, they recommend you use staples for all of this. I had a disaster time with staples on some of the early testing on this just because of the way it looks. Now, if you'll notice all the way to the tip of the wing here, it looks like the wing's curving a little bit. That's an optical illusion with my camera because I fired a laser down this 100 times and that's straight as an arrow. So I'm not sure if it's because I'm to the left or right or if it's because I've got the wide angle on my camera right now, but there is not a curve in that. Um, when I saw this picture, I'm like, holy crap, what did I do? And I went out and put my laser on it and it's perfectly straight. So that's it, folks. That's um, getting the first skin on this. I'm hoping to be able to do two skins a day. But if not, if it's just one skin a day, I'm not in a race to the end here. So I hope you enjoy the video, everybody. Um, this is one of the most nervous parts of the project for me because if I epoxy this on and it looks like crap and I got to chisel it all off and grind it and cut it, it would be a massive setback. Not, not to mention, I wouldn't know what plan B is right now. Plan B, I guess, would be going back and making fiberglass leading edges. and uh, But this worked perfect. And um, all I can say is, is, is have patience. I do have a video coming up of all the tools you need to build this because I've gotten several people. I've tried to cover that in videos, but somebody wants me to recover every tool that I've used on this. You know, my bandsaw, my metal cutting bandsaw, my porta band, um, everything that I use personally. But you don't have to have all of those. Okay, I've always believed over the last 20 years, I've tried to collect every tool I need. I know some people say, oh my God, you must be rich to have all these tools. Folks, it's taken me 20 years to collect all the tools I have. Um, and the reason I say 20 is like five years before that, I got divorced and everything went away. <laughs> so I had to start all over. Um, yeah, I think it's been 25, or maybe it's been 28 years. I don't know. It's about 20 years ago I started. Well, no, it can't be. My daughter's 20. So about 22 years ago, I started collecting all these tools again. Okay? So um, the next air bike update is probably going to be this wing or the one about the tools I used. Um, I have had a couple of people ask me to do a video about the air bike on what were the biggest challenges. And, you know, right now, I thought the fuselage was going to be a challenge, TIG welding that fuselage up, and actually, that was like awesome fun. Um, the wing has actually been the, I hate to use the word challenge, because challenge means I'm going into something and I really don't know what I'm doing. Um, I try to work so many steps ahead in everything I do that I, I hopefully I know what I'm doing. So, I, I um, it was a challenge in, until I had a plan. So I've got to figure out how to make a video about what I thought was challenging. Um, because I'm odd. I mean, there's something wrong with me, folks, in the way I think. Um, I always end my videos videos with trying to get youth uh, involved in model aviation or full-scale aviation. You know, um, I got a really interesting email from kind of a bigwig that does a lot with the EAA and said, Hey, Dag, I love your videos in youth and aviation, but you're only talking about model aviation. How about getting kids into full-scale? And you know they're absolutely right. Um, if you ever took a kid to Oshkosh, um, or Sun and Fun, that would be one way to get them, uh, completely, uh, crack addicted to aviation. Take them to some of those big, or even an air show. But I'm really hell bent on getting kids involved in model aviation, folks. I'm, <clears throat> there's so many benefits of getting a kid into model aviation versus Call of Duty or Grand Theft Auto. I know 12 year old kids that I see on Facebook and I'm not trying to alienate any of my pals, but their kids are 12 years old playing Grand Theft Auto. And I think learning to fly a park flyer or a, uh, 
anything would be better than getting them into Call of Duty at 12 years old or, or Grand Theft Auto, especially Grand Theft Auto, because you can be a sniper and go around just killing innocent people with a video game. And as an adult, that might sound fun, but for kids to get their brains wired that way so young, I'd rather them getting wired in model aviation and becoming a Chuck Yeager or Neil Armstrong or a Hoot Gibson or an Elon Musk, you know? So rock on, everybody. I, please, I hope by this time you've liked and subscribed. Um, and if you want to, try to share my videos. One of the things that I've always been a little bit curious about is people tell me how great my videos are. And then I say, well, did you share it? And they're like, no, nah, I didn't even think of sharing it. Please share my videos. So um, like, subscribe, and share is some of the coolest things you could do to help support my channel. Rock on, everybody. I'll see you next time. And, uh, oh, the next model airplane... Um, for my model airplane enthusiast video is going to be what I consider the best flying model airplane you could have. Okay. And there's some categories there. Okay. What's the best, you know, warbird you could pick? What's the best general aviation plane you could pick? And I've gotten a lot of requests on, you know, dad, what would you think would be the perfect airplane that fits all of my needs? And I tell you, there's bazillion airplanes out there. You know, you could go from, flying a Piper Cub, and if that's what gets your creative juices going, awesome. But you might also want to have a B-58 Hustler, which isn't going to be an easy Delta to fly, but if you could fly it, that might get your juices going. So that's the next model airplane video coming, okay? So rock on, everybody. Hope you like and subscribe and share. See you next time. Be safe. Bye-bye.